This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is part two of the prophecies that is being fulfilled in Numbers chapter 33. Uh, the last on part one, I don't know what happened. Sometimes my computer just goes wacko. The sound dropped out at the end. So I clipped it off. So we were reading from Jeremiah chapter 7. Uh, let's go back to, let's see. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 30. And we'll start back from there. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. So evidently they were doing evil things in, in modern day language, it'd be the church, but back then it was the temple, right? Verse 31. And they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. Human sacrifice people to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, Satanism, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. The valley of slaughter. Think of Armageddon. That's... Uh, it's going to be the valley of slaughter, the very place where they were killing their children in satanic sacrifice. The wicked are going to be slaughtered. Behold, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Topheth till there be no place. In other words, they're going to be digging graves there until there's no more room to dig graves. That's how many graves there's going to be there. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Fray means, you know, nobody's going to shoo the, the birds away, you know, like a scarecrow trying to keep the crows out of the field after you've planted crops. So, Verse 34, Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, that's Christ, and the voice of the bride, that's Israel. And if you believe Galatians 3.29, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Christians are divorced Israel, Jeremiah 3, 8. If, and book of Hosea. Uh, then will I cause the seas from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. It's going to be desolate because, guess what? All the wicked are going to be slain. So let's go take a look at number chapter uh, verse 32, where it's talking about the, uh, the valley of slaughter. Now, let's take a look at Psalms chapter 58, verse 10. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I love this. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. You know, those, uh, those that murdered the Christians in the Inquisition in Spain... Oh, yeah. 
The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. You know, all the uh, so-called atheists love to uh, talk about how evil God is for the flood of Noah and murdering all those people. Well, you know, they were satanic hybrids, the giants. And according to legends, when the people couldn't feed the giants, the, the giants killed the people and ate them. And, you know... <laughs> They were never meant to be. The angelic fallen angels were never meant to create hybrid children. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 19. And a lot of people don't believe that, but I have an entire playlist on uh, the sons of God, the angels that sinned. And if you can go through that entire playlist of whatever it is, 10, 12 hours, 15 hours, whatever it is, and then still tell me that the sons of God in Job 38 that were created shouted for joy before the earth was created, when Adam didn't come till six days later. If you could tell me that the sons of God in that, in, in that instance are men without bodies, by the way, uh, good luck with that. What can I tell you? Revelation chapter 19. Let's read this. And after these things, now this ties right in with uh, Jeremiah 7, what we just read. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in he heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments. The flood of Noah, true and righteous. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready." And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am not, I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren, and have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Do you know that the testimony or the words of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy? That's what this says. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. A vesture is... Um, take a look. At, you know, if you ever don't know what a word means in the Bible, um, there's two couple things you could do. One, you can look up in a... Bible software where the first time that word appears and usually in the context it'll explain what the word means or you can understand what it means but then they have something that's called embeds when it says that the birds will be filled with meat um, you know if you look at the word meat 
it has the word eat in it, E-A-T. Well, what is vesture? V-E-S-T-U-R-E. It has the word vest in it, V-E-S-T. Oh, what's a, what is a vest? It's a piece of clothing. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, isn't that what came out of uh, in Numbers 33? Let's go back to Numbers 33 real quick. Uh, let's see. Numbers 33, verse 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies, armies, under the hand of Moses and Aaron. Armies. Okay, Revelation, back to Revelation 19 and verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness, fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen to that. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls, Now, uh, what's a fowl? Well, it's F-O-W-L-S. In bed. Take away the F, take away the S, and you got owl. O-W-L. F-O-W-L-S. Well, an owl is a bird, so fowls are birds. And people say, oh, that King James Bible, it's horrible. It's too hard to read and understand. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's really not. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sat, sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Oh, yeah. When Christ returns, the whole earth is going to be gathered together against him. But <laughs> it's not going to matter, you know. Verse 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. I love that. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 7. Verse 32. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Isn't that what's going to happen? Slaughter people going to be slaughter. For they shall bury in Topheth till there be no place, and the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven. Isn't that what we just read in Revelation? Yeah. And for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Fray means to, you know, shoo them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride for the land shall be desolate. All right, let's go back to Numbers 33. Verse 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies, armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron, 
And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow, after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn, which the Lord had smitten among them upon their gods also the Lord executed judgments. And the children of Israel were removed from Ramses and pitched in Sukkoth. Now, what's interesting is God, um, the plagues of Egypt that Egypt did, those were, uh, you know, the frogs, the, the locusts, the, uh, the darkness, those were all challenges to the Egyptian gods. And they had a god of the Nile. They had a god, um, let's see, Ra was the sun god. Well, it was dark for, what, three days or something like that? I, did a, I got a playlist on that if you're interested. Because the plagues of Revelation mimic closely the plagues in Egypt. All right, so let's take a look. All right, uh, let's see, verse 6. And they departed from Sukkoth and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. And they removed from Etham and turned again unto Fiharoth, which is before Baal Zephon. And they pitched before Migdol. Did you catch that? Baal Zephon, B A A L Z E P H O N. Baal was a name, it meant Lord, but it became associated with Satanism. And uh, that's sort of like naming your town Lucifer, you know. Uh, let's see, verse 8. And they departed from before. Fiharoth and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness and went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etham and pitched in Marah. And they removed from Marah and came unto Elam. And in Elam were twelve fountains of water and three score and ten palm trees, and they pitched there. And they removed from Elam and encamped by the Red Sea. And they removed from the Red Sea and encamped in the wilderness of sin. The wilderness of sin. That's an interesting thing. The wilderness of sin. Hmm. You know, God took Israel and let them wander through the desert for 40 years. He took them out of Egypt, which was full of heathen, satanic gods and practices. So he took them physically out of Egypt. And then in the wilderness of sin, he tried to get Egypt out of them. You know, he, he tried to get them to forget the practices of Egypt, and he tried to teach them his ways. But... Um, you know, there was a whole generation that had to die because they their hearts were in Egypt. I mean, let's face it, there was a they actually wanted to return to Egypt. All right, let's take a look at chat numbers chapter eleven. The Lord, you know, Israel was basically they were well, they were slaves in Egypt, right? And the Lord does all the miracles, and the Egyptians are like, hey, you guys have got to get out of here. We don't want you here anymore. We're tired. You know, uh, our crops are being destroyed. Our cattle's dying. Our firstborn's dead. Get out of here. We don't want you people here anymore. Your God is stronger than our gods. Well, then the people leave, and they go out into the desert, and, you know, there's just... Uh, what's out in the desert? Nothing. There's no food. There's no water. That's why it's a desert. Uh, so the Lord supplies them with manna and supplies them with water. 
Well, then the people are starting to grumble about, oh man, I'm really tired of eating this manna stuff. I mean, it's manna for breakfast, manna for lunch, manna for dinner. Man, oh man, am I tired of manna. So let's, that's the background. Numbers 11, verse 1. And when the people complained, you know what, if the Lord gives you something and you start complaining, he ain't happy about it. Oh, you don't like the gift that I give you? You don't like it? Really? Maybe I'll give you something else, or maybe I'll take away what I gave you. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he had called the name of the place Taborah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude, ah, there was a mixed multitude. It wasn't just Israelites in this thing, it was a mixed multitude. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Oh yeah, we want, we want meat. We don't want this manna junk. We're, I'm tired of eating manna. I want some flesh. I want, some, I want a big, fat, juicy steak. You know, verse 5. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Yeah, remember I used to prepare the fish and the cucumbers with the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic? Oh, I miss that in Egypt so much. I'm really tired of this Lord's manna stuff, you know? Ugh. Verse 6. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all except beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of bedillium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. There's the key word. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them? That thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the suckling, sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal, deal thus with me, Kill me, I pray thee, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. You know, Moses is sick and tired of hearing their complaining. Verse 16, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. You know what this is? Seventy men of the elders of Israel. This is what the Jews call the uh, Sanhedrin. Okay, verse 17. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the Spirit which is upon thee, and I will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. 
Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out at your nostrils. <laughs> I like this. Oh yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have flesh coming out your nose. Okay, that's how much you're gonna have. But even a whole month until it come out at your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? Boy, people have a short memory, don't they? First, they're crying unto the Lord because they're slaves. The Lord takes them out, gives them water, gives them food. They're, they don't have to so toil 10, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. And, and then they're crying, oh, we don't, I, want some, I want some meat. I want flesh. I want to eat something. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. People don't change, do they? Why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people among whom I am are 600,000 6, footmen, and thou hast said I will give them flesh, that they may eat a whole month. Okay, that's 600,000 footmen. That's, that's quite an army, people. I mean, that's, that's just footmen. That's, that's not including the women. That's not including the children. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men of the, in the camp. The name of the one was Ildad and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them and they were of them that were written but went not out of the tabernacle and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Ildad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Wow, isn't that wonderful? And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Actually, in the later, latter days, or the end times, as you could say, it's going to come to pass. There's a, a book called Joel. He was an Old Testament prophet, chapter 2, verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Uh, this is Joel, chapter 2, verse 26. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. That's going to be me. Your young men shall see visions. So, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Speaking of dreams, I've been having dreams about, I'm assuming it's the end time stuff. 
and it's not good. I, 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 and the thing is, I'll have a dream and I'll wake up and then I'll go back to sleep and then it continues. Ah, that's some weird stuff, but it's not good. It's not good. All right, uh, let's go back to where we were. Numbers 11. Verse 29, And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake that God, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. It's going to happen one day. And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel, and there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. So that's about three feet tall layer of quails. Uh, uh, I mean, a day's journey one way and a day's journey the other. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of quail, people. And the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day, and they gathered the quails, he that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against his people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hathavah. Boy, I should have taken Hebrew in Bible college, huh? Because there they buried the people that lusted, and the people journeyed from Kibroth Hathavah unto Hazaroth and abode at Hazaroth. So it doesn't pay to anger the Lord and complain about his gifts to you, you know? Paul writes in 1 Timothy 6, chapter, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. What does it mean to be content? It means be happy with what you have. Doesn't the Lord say in the uh, the Ten Commandments not to covet or want, you know, don't don't covet your neighbor's wife or his his animals or you know, don't covet his house, don't covet, don't be envious and jealous of what other people have. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Be happy with what you got. That's what he's saying here. Verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. You know what, people? Uh, I uh, was a volunteer chaplain at the South Florida Veterans Cemetery. And you know what? I never saw a casket with a trailer hitch with a trailer attached carrying gold and silver into the ground with them to go to their appointed place. So, but godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. What is raiment? Clothing. So if you got food and clothing, be content, be happy with it. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Do you know what perdition means? It means to fall, as in falling into the pit of hell. All right, this is going to be the end of part two. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that name is, above all names, is Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.